on the cusp of what I call a huge traumatic transition from childhood to adulthood. And there's Ms. Fatima going to again bore you with these thoughts. Humor me, stay tuned, be alert. For the next 18 minutes, I have some pearls of wisdom for you. So the question is, does the great book define you as a person? When I thought about it, I thought of the great book as a crutch. You know, kind of the safety net when you're free falling? Kind of like the skeleton that you need to fall, um, you know, create that mass, the muscle, the fat, the fiber, eventually the soul. It's kind of the thing that you need on a rainy day when life gets hard. Um, to be honest, children, the great book in many ways may define you. But in many, 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 many more ways, you define that great book. So like I said, huge sympathies, children. Middle school, high school, I have an 18 year old, so I know where I'm coming from. Um, most traumatic period of her life. <laughs> I wish I could tell you it gets easier. Um, I will promise you one thing though, at 49, I can tell you it's dealable. You cope. And that's nothing to do with intellect, it just has to do with age. As you grow older, you get a little more conditioned, you become a little more tolerant, less aggressive, you calm down. <laughs> How that pans out, whether it's brilliant, easy, challenging, obviously you'll have a part to play in it and your great book will. So really think about it. Um, when you are in this mood, like I said, so many conversations, your parents will tell you, this is it, spend enough time. This is the way you will secure your future. Um, your teachers will tell you, you have no other business but to work hard. You have to get those marks on that grade book from middle school, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, everything comes. Um, then you have your tuition teachers, who put more pressure and tell you, stars and moons will be yours if you attend my classes, practice those worksheets, and score. And wait, those admission counselors that will be after your neck in grade eight, grade 10, grade 12. I know, because my son goes through it. They will tell you this is it. Marks matter, nothing else does. Yeah, yeah, do your NGO stuff and somewhere contribute and you know, write some book and publish it, all that's fine, but the great book matters. You have your friends, your peers, who put more pressure by using social media posts to put you under the scanner. So you know, if you think about it, and just really spend some time, and I'm actually gonna concentrate on this, this esteemed crowd here, because you are at the crust for making those decisions. Okay, got it. So basically, optimize the great book, you know what? And in that way, it will define me. Universities will fall in my lap. Hopefully, someone will pick me up from campus and I will be secure. Seems pretty simple, right? All I have to do is study a bit, get those marks, you should teach us the hey. Let's do that and optimize it. Great. Is that it? Is that your great book? Is that you? Does that great book talk about your fears? Does that great book talk about the mistakes you're gonna make? Does that great book um, actually capture what you wanted to ask, but your mother made you change from economics to biology because she's a doctor? Did that great book talk about your humor? Did that great book capture a little bit of your personality where you were a little more empathetic when your friend was going through depression? Um, and you stood up for your friend? When your friend was copying, you didn't snitch, but you told your friend, don't do it next time. Did that great book have you? So when you start thinking about it, and you will reflect on it at some stage, the penny will drop and you'll start thinking, is that really you? Is that your personal statement? Um, you know, when you start to realize that, you realize that, hello, I'm actually defining my grade book if I answer those questions. I'm actually going to realize I'm just a human being. In many ways, very damaged. I have flaws. I have super talents as well. Some of those won't make money. 
some of those will make a lot of money. And I've seen enough social media posts about it. I also know that I can actually get help because not all of what my problems are need to be raped or use alcohol as a bait. I can actually define that by being cool and resist it. And my high will actually be because I came up with a brilliant idea, because I read that much and I discovered a program that will actually work for me. So in a lot of ways, you start to define that great book. You will take risks with certain subjects that you never thought were possible before. And when you start doing that, um, you're in control. And you've actually created a skeleton with a soul that's you. So, you know, my, my thing to you was that I'm not going to stand here as someone at 49 and give you these pearls of wisdom because I'm older and now you should listen to me. I'm actually going to base it on three real life examples of what that great book is to you. What is that great book? It's the one that defines you in some ways. But remember I told you, it's that crutch. It's that thing that you will fall back on. And I'm going to substantiate that with three real life examples. Because quite frankly, kids, I hate it when people give me theories. It sounds really good. It's in a book. It doesn't work, really. Um, my husband is the um, chairman of selectors for the National Indian Cricket Team. We put out a brilliant team during the World Cup, won all our 10 matches. What happened on the finals? We lost. So the plan B is very, very important, but it's still that crutch. It's still that skeleton that's um, important. So coming back to my real life stories. I had the priv uh, privilege of meeting Andre Agassi in an event in Mumbai. Uh, anybody heard Andre Agassi's name? Yeah, everybody's heard. He's also written a book now. Um, cool guy, right? Some head uh, sports no, no. Uh, coach of yours, sorry, head boy of yours. Uh, there he is. He's a tennis player as well, so he will reflect on this. So Andre actually does a lot of work in education, mind you. Uh, so I asked Andre, uh, because we were allowed to ask questions, I said, why for someone who's achieved so much, um, you're sitting on a wealth of funds. You can do pretty much what you want to do and take a holiday every day. Why are you working in the education space? And I want you to listen to this answer very, very carefully. He said, quite frankly, I hated what I did. He's written an autobiography about it. I did not want to be on that tennis court every single day. It was miserable. I did it because I was living my father's dream. And we have a very dear friend, Yuvraj Singh, uh, Ajit's best friend. And Yuvi tells me the same thing. I hated my father. Uh, I said, you should love him right now because you're sitting on a lot of wealth because he got you there. He said, yeah, but it's my crutch. So anyway, coming back to Andre, apologize, I keep uh, jumping stories. But Andre said, Fatima on circuit, they were more talented players than me. He said, my best friend on the circuit, a fellow Russian turned the memory, he's now a citizen of the United States, should have been world number one before I was. Unfortunately, there was an injury, a life-threatening injury where he couldn't play again. Unfortunately, he had no great book to fall back on. So that crutch, I told you, that's important, that great book, he didn't have it. And he's saying, I have seen him suffer, gone through depression, finally took his life because he had no crutch to fall back on. And that's why I'm working in education to create educational systems. And he does a lot of work with charter schools in the, in the United States of America. He says, I want to give children an opportunity to have a skeleton. How much fat you put on is up to you, but you need the skeleton. Story number one. Story number two. A brilliant entrepreneur 
He has raised 800 crores funding. He is part of a large pharmaceutical chain worldwide. He is younger than me, my fellow Sydneyite, who was learning disabled. Um, seriously, more money than I did. Um, he just told me when I asked him the story, and I said, does the great book define you? He said, Fatima, I have nothing to say except I wasn't an ideal student. With my learning disabilities, obviously I was at a disadvantage. But he said, all my struggles in life, and I got lucky, taught me the one thing. Had I paid more attention, to what I studied, and had I taken those subjects that I enjoy, my struggles would have been less. So this is not me telling you, like I said, using my pearls of wisdom with my age, but this is a fact that the great book gives you that crutch while you continue to define it. So think about it. My third story is about a young budding badminton player. A cricketer's daughter uh, gave up education to pursue badminton from middle school, year six. How many year six? There you are. So imagine not going to school and all she did was actually train every single day. Sorry I'm actually talking a lot about sport but that's just natural because it's very close to my But I hope you understand. Whatever. So, Budding player, dedicated, I mean, I, I would look at her and say, Kiara, stop. Like, you're in grade six, like laugh, go out, do what normal children do, which is put lipstick and post those pictures on social media. You can't be this dedicated. Unfortunately, COVID happened, and she went through um, a bit of a mental uh, challenge because she picked up an injury as well. Having said that, the one thing her mother had thought about and anticipated was the homeschooling option, which meant she still had her crutch. She didn't have it in a normal school scenario, but she still had that crutch. And that crutch, which is that grade book that she did by taking the open school examination, gave her the strength to pursue a career in mass media and communication and today she set up her own social media company. So remember, it was her safety net. She didn't let it define her, but she defined it so that she could switch careers and she would probably be India's top sports commentator in time. Watch out for her name, Kiara. Um, my last story, and I don't have bells ringing right now to remind me that I'm off uh, the time limit, so I'm good. My last story is a very, very serious one, and it is very, very close to home for me. Picture this, everybody. 18-year-old, final year of high school, grade 12. All the teachers say, brilliant child. Lots of talent, ingenious, original thinker. The grade book does not say that. The grade book shows a mediocre child. What happens next? Should the child define and say, I don't care, Someone will pick me, I will get there, I'm smart enough. The reality, children, students, young, talented um, individuals, the grade book is an entry into everything. You can have a brilliant mind, but only your parents will be happy about it. Unfortunately, the entry levels require some benchmarks. The child has two options in front, and I ask this child the question. So will this grade book define you, or will you define that grade book? And he looked it around and did his own research, and he's found options and said, why would 
I dig my own grave by not optimizing. If I'm smart and I know I have potential, why don't I put the effort and create that safety net for myself? I will find my happiness in universities that I want to pursue, but why would I be foolish enough to give it up? But I will not do this cash service. I will not get my friends, parents to write letters of recommendation telling everybody how wonderful I am and what a thinker I am. I will do it my way. But that personal statement will reflect that child that he has still taken that. And maybe you need to call me back, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, in July uh, to actually know when the results happen how that great book defined this child or did the child define the great book in which university the child has gotten into. So, you know, the writing is on the wall. Um, you have the power, quite frankly, and nobody else does. Um, you can use these examples and there are plenty of more inspiring examples available that will tell you that your great book is your base. And you can shape, create, change it, use it, manipulate it, and optimize it the way you want it. So think about the free fall that you have between now and grade 12. Think about what you want that grade book to reflect. Think about telling your doctor mom, biology isn't life's solution. Think about telling your sporty father that if I don't pursue sports science, I'm still going to make a rocking career in films. Probably talk about sports through films. Take those risks, define that great book. My job was simply to share some facts and some experiences and get you to have more conversations after the one I've started off. I hope it makes you think and I hope it tells you one thing. We're all damaged, we're all unique, and the more damaged we are, the more people around us can help us. Um, so create your own path with that great book and have a lot of fun while you do it. Thank you.